Hello everybody and welcome back to Buckeye Politics. It's me, your favorite Ohioan. Today we're going to be doing a quick little video looking at the polls, aka the 538 generic ballot. When most people like look at polls, this is the most this is the first thing that comes up. And so I really want to point out how biased it is and how incorrect it is. And um, when we look at the pollsters, it's clear that there is their methodology is just not correct. And because 538 and their generic ballot poll this year is the thing that pretty much everyone sees when they first look up polls, like unless you're really politically in depth, you wouldn't know this is, you wouldn't know where to look for polls, and this is the first thing that always pops up. This is the most common thing people look at when they talk about the polls. And so because of that, I want to focus on 538's generic ballot, especially. As this, there's been a lot of talk about, oh, this means Democrats are leading in the midterms. Ooh. And it's like, no, look at the polls. Look at the numbers besides the thing on your screen. Take the effort to click the links to the polls and look at the numbers and you'll see that you're just brain dead but i'm sorry i'm going on a rant here because this is really annoying so you can see here according to 538 which is famed for their um incredibly accurate polls ever since about august 4th democrats have continued to slowly gain in the generic ballot obviously they've had a couple where they've dropped down a bit such as like um august 20th to like the 24th they came back up a little bit around the 30th and now uh, on august 30th they're about up by 0 0.5 although republicans have actually begun to surge a little bit apparently it's kind of hard to tell but you can tell there is a little gop surge and so I think in maybe about a month or so, we will begin to see the Republicans take the lead. Or so probably less, actually. Probably in a week or two, I expect Republicans to take the lead in the generic ballot on 538. They already have an RCP. They're already surging heavily in RCP, which is another which is another much more accurate pollster. If you're new to politics and you want to look at a pollster that's more accurate in terms of generic ballot, look up RCP, generic ballot, first link, real clear politics. They do a much better job. And even then, they're not perfect, but they're much better than 538. So we're going to come down here and let's look at the pollsters. So this is like the graph, but let's look at the pollsters. So according to 538, the most recent poll was connected from August 26th, August 24th to August 26th. That was by YouGov, which was sponsored by CBS News. They polled 1,854 likely voters, and that showed a Republican plus two lead. That should be a bad sign already. YouGov and CBS are both known for pretty much for undersampling Republicans and being slightly Democratic biased. Now, when I say Democratic biased, I don't necessarily mean, oh, they fake the numbers, which I mean, some of these polls do, as we'll see. But a lot of them are just like they oh, they undersample Republicans just because of their methodology. Sometimes it's they're intentionally skewing the numbers. Sometimes they just miss they just misjudge people. It's, it, it really depends. But YouGov and CBS basically always um undersampled the Republican Party, and yet Republicans still lead by two, and they have a huge sample size of likely voters, which is the voters you need to use. Likely voters are people that are actually going to vote this cycle. Registered voters, as we're going to see, are just random people. So we come in here and let's look at Big Village. So I've literally never heard of this pollster. It is apparently an affiliate of CNN, and so because of that, they get a B rating. So Big Village, a pollster that I've never heard of, and we click, look, click on, you're going to see why it's so bad, has a Democratic Party leading by eight points nationwide. And they pulled registered voters and adults. Like, what? Why would you use adults? Like, at least use people who are registered to vote. So basically, I'm completely counting out this poll with the adults in my bed. They might want me to click on that. I'm completely discounting this poll with adults. You should never use polls like that. That's just, those, those people aren't even going to vote. Why do they? <laughs> the people who don't even know anything, they just see. <laughs> they just, they, they're just adults. So discount those polls that have adults. But Big Village, you can see here, they have 848 registered voters. Already a bad sign. You usually don't want to use likely voters after the primary season. Because, you know, likely voters are people that are actually going to vote. Registered voters are just people who are registered to vote. There is a difference. And so, currently, Big Village is the Republican Party down by eight points. They have the Democrats at 48% to the GOP at 41%. So let's click on Big Village and let's look at let's look at their stats. So they're given a B, which is actually a very high ranking on um, 538. You can see here they are above average pollster by quite a bit. They're on par with things like Rasmussen, um, University of Arkansas, University of Illinois, and they're only a little bit behind the great pollster known as Emerson College and where were they at? Trafalgar. Trafalgar. So Trafalgar and Emerson College, two of the better pollsters, as is Rasmussen and Big and Big Data Poll. Uh, Big Data Poll is not on here, but those are kind of like the big four polls. So as you can see here, apparently this pollster is highly rated. They're very close with um, Trafalgar and Rasmussen and other decent pollsters. Come down here. Let's look at how they, let's look at how their recent polls are done. So Big Village polling, which as you can see here, is an affiliate of CNN. They haven't polled an election since 2016. This poll is apparently on the same par with much higher, much more accurate pollsters. They use registered voters, which is something you should never do after primary season. They use a relatively small sample size. And they haven't done polls since 2016. 
what is this? So according, so let's look at how pr the predictions were in 2016. Now maybe they had good predictions in 2016. Their Senate race, the Senate prediction in 2016, they had the Democrat McGinty winning by five points. In reality, Republican Pat Toomey won by a point and a half. They were six and a half points off. In Nevada, the Senate race, they had the Republican winning by two points. Catherine Cortez matched with the Democrat winning by two, so they were off by about four points. And that is, in that sample, however, they actually overestimated the GOP, which is really the only time they do that. There's just just a weird outlier. Um, looking at the president race, they in Pennsylvania or. Yeah, in Pennsylvania. They had Clinton winning Pennsylvania by 4 points. They had Trump win it by 0 0.7. That's pretty much on par with what most pollsters had. This is literally the definition of an election mafia poll. These polls you just say, oh, they, we just, uh, it's Clinton's up by like 4. And then Trump wins it by like 7. So currently they have about a bias of about uh, maybe 4 points for Democrats. Because we're out, well, we won't count this one. I don't know what they did for this election. I'm, I have no idea what happened in Nevada. So they, uh, they also polled Pennsylvania, this, uh, the president race. Um, pretty much they did another poll, apparently, in which they had, um, Clinton up by five. So they were five points off in that poll. They polled Nevada. They had Trump up by six in Nevada, when in reality, Clinton won it by two. So they're just really Republican biased in Nevada. I don't know what their terminology is. So other than Nevada, which is both polls have been, both polls for Nevada they conducted in 2016 were favored for the GOP. So I'm just going to assume they have a weird methodology. So discount Nevada. We're not talking about Nevada. We're talking about the generic ballot. And so far, they have been completely off. Um, let's look at the state of Florida. They had Clinton winning Florida by two, which you're going to be like, oh, well, that's actually pretty close. But most pollsters said Florida razor thin, so it's not really that impressive. Once again, this going along with the crowd, a basic poll. They had President Florida Clinton up by one, so they were a little bit closer. Um, in the Senate race in Florida, they had Rubio winning by one point. In reality, Rubio won by seven, so they over oversampled or overestimated Democrats there. Um, they had McCain winning by a perfect margin, so, you know, <laughs> great. And not like everyone else had that. They had Clinton winning the national, ba the g generic ballot by six points. Those are the polls I want to look at. The national polls. These, this is close to the generic ballot. Now, national poll are just like, oh, how are the, what's the, what's the state of the nation? How is the nation going to vote? And they're using for the generic ballot. So back in 2016, they had Clinton winning the generic ballot by five. Clinton won by two in real life. So they overestimated Democrats in the generic ballot by about three points. And they also had another poll where they had Clinton up by six. Clinton obviously won the, uh, won the uh, popular vote by about two points. So they overestimated her by about three. So they overestimated Democrats by two to three points in generic to ballot or aka nationwide polls. Come back here, add that to their sample, and it's basically only D plus five or so. Which for a poll like that, an election, an election mafia poll, that's really not that good. And then they, I would have surprised, they have the same poll as Rasmussen. And sure, Rasmussen had it was sponsored by a Hunter Biden laptop story, but still, Rasmussen is usually a very pretty accurate pollster. And they have the Republicans up by five, with a huge sample of likely voters. This is the other thing, is sample size. The more people you poll, the more accurate you're going to be. A huge sample size of people who are actually going to vote, Republicans are up five. And by a pollster that's pretty tip that's pretty typically accurate. Let's look at Emerson College here. Emerson College is, you know, not perfect, but they're still a pretty solid pollster. They used registered voters and Republicans are still up by one. So even Emerson pretty much has the Republicans having a narrow lead with registered voters. McLaughlin and Associates, they're a joke. They have the whole races even. News Nation, I'm not even sure who they are. They are Republicans up three. And then all these here have Democrats plus six, plus eight, plus four, plus five. And these are all done by YouGov and Echelon Insights, which if we look at YouGov, they traditionally have a B plus rating for whatever reason, but they have a v almost always overestimate the Democrats. In the House generic ballot back in 2020, they had Democrats winning the generic ballot by 10 points in the House. Democrats only won it by three. So back in 2020, they overestimated the Democrats by seven points points in the generic ballot they currently have a they currently have republicans um up by two so if you take that in that's, that's like that's like R, an r plus nine lead for the gop so that's interesting to look at <laughs> so that really just shows you how when you look at the details of these pollsters there is either a huge bias or a huge error going on right here because republicans look at past results look at the numbers they are doing actually very well and they should be leading in the in this uh graph here so that thank you for watching this video i hope you enjoyed and if you did please like and subscribe for more